Hey everyone, this week there won't be a guest on the podcast, but I've decided to dig through some of the archives of my old YouTube channel and bring back a video, well it's the audio at this point, but bring back a topic that it was certainly one of my more popular videos when I had my old channel up, and I would say it's probably one of my most controversial videos. I made it in a response to another guy who had made a video about the negative aspects of teaching English in Japan, and I presented a counter argument to that. I made it about three years ago now, and while my views have not changed, that's why I'm putting this uh, the audio version back up, while my views have not changed, they have evolved. So I'd just like to say that uh, pay attention to, to what I say in the, uh, the following audio, but I'd, uh, I'd just like to say that if you're thinking about coming over to Japan to teach English, or if you're just even thinking about coming over to Japan, keep in mind that English teaching is just a job. It's not going to be the exact same as what you would expect an English teacher to be in Western culture. And given that, don't come in with any preconceived expectations if, you, if you've if you never taught English abroad before. It's completely different. Uh, with that being said, there are downsides to teaching English in Japan and foreign countries, but there are a lot of good benefits. I'll get into a lot of it in the in the following audio uh, about why I do not think teaching English in Japan or in a foreign country sucks, as a lot of people on YouTube have claimed, or if you search the internet you'll find a lot of negative stuff about it. But I present what I believe are the positive aspects. And I'll before we get to the audio, I just want to say the most positive aspect of English teaching in Japan is how easy it is to get an English teaching job here. That could be a negative for some people, but if your goal is to get into Japan, English teaching is the easiest way to get into Japan. And you can pursue whatever goals you want to once you are here. Now, how you go about that, that's up to you. But if you want to get a if you want to come to Japan, live and work in Japan, the easiest way is to get an English teaching job. Alright? So whether you disagree with my opinion or agree with my opinion, please listen to what I have to say in the following audio and to what I've said now. Form your own opinion about it. Alright? So without further ado, this is why I think teaching English in Japan does not suck. Shay. I wanted to make this video in a response to a lot of um, negative videos uh, about teaching English in Japan. Uh, there's a couple of videos out there that uh, people who say teaching English in Japan sucks. I don't think teaching English in Japan sucks and I'll give you my reasons why. Well, one of the reasons why a lot of foreigners who come to Japan to teach English or a lot of foreigners in Japan have a problem with those who teach English is they say, well, you're not a real teacher. You're, you're just paid by some company or some school to come in and, and be a foreigner um, who will magically give uh, their, their English ability to Japanese people. 
Well, that might be true for some companies. They, they truly feel that the only qualification you need to be a, a teacher, so to speak, is to speak English natively and to have a college degree and look nice in a suit. I'm not going to lie or deny the fact that those companies and schools do exist, but that's not all the schools in Japan. There are different types of uh, English teaching jobs in Japan. Some are more geared towards business, uh, the business side, which uh, there's uh, privately owned uh, schools called Eikaiwas. These focus on like short, you know, one hour lessons that the, the student pays. Usually they sign like a, a contract for a certain number of lessons. They, they get the foreign teacher, the English speaker, to teach them English. These range from really small schools all the way to big corporations. One of the, the biggest draws for those companies is hiring young, good-looking English speakers to promote their school, you know, to, to draw in uh, prospective uh, students or clients to make money. That's obviously part of their business model. And I don't think that is inherently wrong. If you are going in knowing that this is a for-profit business, then you should come to expect a level of selling involved with that. This is a business. Their goal is to make money. Okay? So if you have a problem with that, don't get a job at one of those places. It's pretty simple. Now there are positions like uh, ALTs or working through the JET program who work for uh, elementary schools or junior highs or high schools to be an assistant language teacher for the Japanese English teacher at the school. The only qualification you really need to teach at these schools is to be a native speaker. But your job is not to be those students main English teacher. That's what their Japanese teacher is hired to do. Whether that teacher has um, a good speaking ability or not is not really the point. Is They went to school and got their, their degree in teaching to become a teacher at a school. That, that is what they did. You're brought in as sort of a supplementation for that teacher to kind of show off what um, native English looks and sounds like. So you are not the main teacher in that classroom. If you just have a degree in like communications or, or business or history or something and not in teaching, you know, you don't really get a lot of training unless it's hands-on. Those type of jobs I would say expect to just be a supplement to the actual teacher. Then there are private schools which actually do hire accredited teachers. If you really want to teach English as a foreign language or you know and you have the certificates for that, these are what you want to aim for is at universities or actual private schools who who hire you to be the main teacher for that school. Each uh, type of English teaching job in Japan is, is very different. If you're looking up wanting to get an English job in Japan, I really, really encourage you to do your research onto what type of English teaching job you want to pursue. Another complaint, or something I've, I've kind of touched on a little bit earlier, other than the fact that oh, you're not a real teacher, you're just hired because you're foreign, kind of plays up on that. And that's, you're, you're hired to just sort of be a foreign presence in the classroom. And a lot of people feel that that might be demeaning to the person. Well, you're not hiring me for my teaching ability. You're hiring me because I'm, you know, not Japanese and I'm, I speak English. They're hiring you for the novelty of it. That's all about perspective. If you feel personally that that is beneath you, right, to, to sort of um, play up on this sort of character, then that job's not for you. I see uh, a lot of English teaching uh, in Japan, or just teaching English as a foreign language, as more than just dry teaching. I'm sure you've all been in a situation in a classroom where the teacher was going on and on and on and on about stuff that is technically right, doesn't matter what subject, could be English, could be history, could be math, could be anything. 
the teacher was going on and on and on and on and all the information was correct and you should be learning but you weren't paying attention you weren't learning because it lacked a sort of presentation that would get you into it this is where I see what the schools who hire foreigners without teaching degree specifically to be the English teacher that, that's where I see this comes in if you are a very uh, outgoing person you well, hell, even if you're not outgoing, if you're just a normal, uh, sociable person, then this is a great uh, job because not only are you teaching, but the, I think it's the interaction with the people that will get them motivated to want to learn English. It is your job to present that information to them in a way that they will learn, right? So and if you just stand up at the whiteboard or whatever board and just drone on and on and on about you know past tense and future tense and all that, they're going to be bored out of their minds. But if you're actively engaging in them and talking with them, and if you're passionate about actually teaching and wanting them to learn, you'll find a way to make that lesson compelling and personal to that student. You have a, a, a unique personality that you can present the English lesson in that will help that student learn. The more the student's engaged, the more the student's entertained, the more their motivation will be. They'll have higher motivation and the more they will want to learn English. The information sticks better. If there's something memorable about the lesson and the point that you're teaching, that will stick in the student's mind more than you just, you know, going on and on about that. Right? You know, you don't have to sell your soul for this. You just have to passionately want to help these people learn English. Right? So, and you know, everyone's different. So there's going to be different strategies for different people. Older people learn a different way than younger people. Kids learn a different way than adults. Uh, junior high kids learn different than, you know, um, salarymen and housewives. Right? So everyone has a different motivation for wanting to learn English and a different um, hook to get them entertained to learning English. One of my language learning philosophies that I've applied to myself with learning Japanese is to be entertained. If I'm ever bored with something that I'm doing, I stop doing it because I'm not learning that way, right? So I think the, the best way to learn anything, especially a language, is to be engaged and entertained by the lesson or the medium of which you're learning it instead of just listening to a boring dry lesson. There are bad companies but there are also good companies. It's how you make the best of your situation is what you know is, is how you will feel about um, whether you're being screwed over or whether you have your dream job. I think English teaching in Japan is a very unique business that can only really work in Japan and other East Asian countries, you know, where, where um, English is such a important but difficult language to learn. There are downsides. You'll get people who come here just to have fun and aren't really into teaching. They don't last too long. They last one or two years, then they go back to their country or wherever. They're recycled frequently. Now, if you really want to teach, you know, and if, in, if teaching here is, has got you hooked like that, then you'll want to find better ways to improve your teaching and to, you know, not mess around and, and, you know, you'll be motivated or else you move on to something else. Now, if you really want to teach, you'll find a place that will accept your style and accept you and, and way of presenting the English language. Okay, if the school or the company that you want to uh, get hired at doesn't accept that, then forget them. Don't don't publicly trash them. Don't um, do anything that can you know sort of burn any bridges because what's the point in that? Because they don't like you as an individual. Who cares? Fine, you're not. You're not bound by anything to, to work for any company. That is your choice that you made. 
and you can make a choice to go somewhere else. If you don't like it, you can go, right? Especially, you know, English schools in Japan. I know, before anyone makes any comments, there are some horror stories that you'll find about um, companies telling some naive kid back in his home country that he'll have all these things and he gets here and he finds out, wait, I have no visa, I have no way of, you know, doing this, this, and this. True. But, usually those companies have a reputation and, you know, it's, uh, it's just, you have to, you have to do your research. You have to do the, your research, so that's vitally important. To kind of break it down again, if, um, if you need it, you know, do you have to be a qualified teacher to get an English teaching job in Japan? No. Does that bring in people from all walks of life? Yes. But the people who are really interested in pursuing an English teaching career in Japan will either A, get a certificate um, to teach English as a foreign language and then thus move on to an accredited school. Two, they'll uh, you know, they, they'll work on their presentation skills and their, and their teaching skills and learning how to engage students, and, you know, and they'll learn how the best way to present English to that student. So they'll learn, right? And they'll move on to a place that either accepts them for that ability or, hey, they can start their own school. You know, if someone asks me, what do you do in Japan? I, you know, I'm not ashamed. Yeah, I teach English, and I enjoy it. And, you know, I, it's, I've had my ups and downs, but I'm not going to say that it sucks. 